thee in the Lord's house. If you're able, please stand and turn with us in your red hymnal to page 113. We'll sing glory to his name. The first, third, and fourth verses. 113. This afternoon, just I don't know. I don't know if any of y'all have J. Vernon McGee commentary through the Amen. Bible. I know Johnny does, and maybe some of Larry and some others, but that's my go to. Uh, I mean, I, I love his commentaries, I really do. But I was trying to study and prepare maybe for a homecoming message if the Lord wants me to preach his homecoming. I still don't know, but I was just thinking, and uh, it seemed like the Lord sent me to the book of Ruth for that, for the homecoming. And uh, I was studying there, and J. Vernon McGee brought one, one of the greatest points out, I believe I've seen and that he's written, and this is what he said. The prodigal family, which was Elimelech, Naomi, Chilion, Malon, when they left Bethlehem, Judah, and went to Moab, that was a prodigal family. And then he referenced back to the prodigal son, that we know of in the New Testament. But here's the thing you gotta realize, and I'd never really thought of it till I read that. And the point was this. 
the prodigals got their whippings and got their beatings when they were away from home. Yeah. Right. Amen. Not when they came back home, yeah. but while they were away from home. Same thing in our lives today. Amen. We'll take our whippings and our beatings from God when we're out of fellowship with him and when we're in the far country. And when we're not with God's people doing what we're supposed to do, that's when we'll take our whipping. Yeah. It's not when you come back home. The Father will meet you with open arms. Right. There was bread in Bethlehem, Judah, when Naomi and Ruth went back. There was still plenty at the Father's house when the prodigal son yeah. went back. So anyway, I'll preach another time, but just thought of that. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. I mean, and, and, and even in these last days, more now than ever, you cannot drop your guard not one split second. You drop your guard one split second, the devil's going to penetrate your armor. You're teaching on the armor of God. I guess you still are. You know what? There is nothing on the backside to protect you in that armor in Ephesians 6. Where's the armor? That means you've got to face Satan head on. Amen. If he gets you from behind, you have no armor. He'll destroy you from behind. Don't run from God. Don't run from the things of God. There is no armor to protect you on that side as you flee God and flee the will of God. He comes on. <coughs> Who he? Jay Vernon. On Gaylax channel, but if you listen to him, yeah. he got up and watched the news oh, yeah. before he preached. Oh, yeah. And, and he's preaching on what's happening today, but it was happening oh, yeah. back 40 years ago when mm -hmm. he was living. Yeah. And, and he's been dead almost 40 years, mm -hmm. but in, in the, some of the sermons he Some of these old men of God, Oliver B. Green, yeah. J. Vernon McGee, some of these old men, I mean, you would just think, Lester Roloff. Yeah. Man, here they are. They're just telling it like it's now. Yeah. Well, I was reading in... I know. Yeah. I was reading there in that same commentary through that passage. He said America, and this was years ago when he wrote this, he said America's either going to have a revival or a revolution. Now, how many years ago did he write that? Where are we at today? Yeah. A revival or a revolution <laughs> through the country. But anyway, yeah. If you don't have J. Vernon McGee's Through the Bible Commentary, I highly recommend it to you. Yeah. You can get, mm -hmm. get hardback. You can get them reasonable. Yeah. They, now, yeah. I would highly recommend them to you. I would highly recommend them to you. He comes on Monday. Just, you know, be careful as you read. Yeah. He, he's a Calvinist. He, he was a Calvinist. Uh, I believe he was a child of God. But I'm just, I, I'm just saying some of the doctrine is steered towards the elect and the predestination. He don't hit on it a lot, but sometimes. He, he admits it. He admits it, yes, that he yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blow me away the first time I see it, but I didn't see that either. Yeah. But then after that, I started picking up on well, it. Calvinism, the way it originally started was it has been hijacked, if you will. Yeah. It's been yeah. twisted from where it was originally started. So anyway, I'll leave that there. We're not going to teach on Calvinism tonight. But if you don't know what it is, look up the TULIP, the T-U-L-I-P. That's the five points of Calvinism today. and You can look that up and check it for yourself. It'll be good homework, good study for you. You'll understand a little bit more about Calvinism. But anyway... Remember these announcements, prayer time. We've got much still to pray about. Continue to pray for the lost, for those that's in our midst, for those in our families, for those out there on the internet, wherever they may be. Let's continue to pray for the lost. God's at work. I promise you, God is not sitting in heaven today asleep. He's alive. He's alive forevermore. And he's at work. And this Bible is coming exactly like it's prophesied. What hasn't already been fulfilled will be fulfilled in God's time. So remember the lost all around us. 
Um, I mentioned the rain. We do need some showers of rain. Don't forget to pray for rain. Then we've got folks that are sick from our church. Tamara McGrady uh, down there this morning with the family while she had surgery. She had surgery early this morning. And uh, they did end up sending her home. I thought they were going to keep her overnight. That was the intentions. But they did send her home. Uh, doctor said he thought he got the knot. He said he didn't see cancer, but they're going to send it off and test it, of course. But he said she should feel a whole lot better now that that's gone. So remember Tamara as you pray. Uh, Johnny mentioned just a while ago a preacher that Jimmy mentioned to him, Don Holyfield. Don Holyfield. I, I've heard the name. I can't say that I know the man, but he's got cancer, diabetes, needs our prayers. So remember Don Holyfield. Uh, Brother Don from Mount Franny Chapel, still at Central Continuing Care. I understand maybe a little bit worse. You remember him as you pray. Our shut-ins from our church, you know who they are. Continue to remember them as you pray. Um, others, you go right ahead and mention David Banks, his dad. I'm, I'm glad he got a good report with his uh, catheterization. That was Monday. Yes, he's good. That's high. And he's had a heart attack, and then they come back and said he had blood clots, and then they thought he might have a tear in his artery, and by Monday morning they couldn't find nothing. Blood pressure was down, and everything else. So. Yeah. David's dad, they, they go to church elsewhere, but he is always, every time I've been around him, he is such an encouragement to me. I believe he's a good Christian man, but uh, we thank God for that. Glad that everything's going well for him. Remember my mom, because they found out today she got the shingles. Oh, no. So remember, remember, her. Well, remember her then, please. <coughs> Y'all remember me. I had a real bad experience today. Okay. Please, please pray for my granddaughter. Okay. Remember please. Ruth and her granddaughter. Is that the one you mentioned yesterday at the Bible study? Yes, Remember this. Remember Frenchie? <coughs> Frenchie. We went to the VA today and several years back he had a mechanical valve installed in his heart and he was told today that that stopped up. I don't know. Well, remember Frenchie, he was with you Sunday here. I still remember him, yes. Well, family friend of ours, I'm not going to mention any names because I don't know how public they want it, but their daughter-in-law is 14 weeks pregnant and the baby has a blockage in his bladder and they're going to have to go in while she's pregnant and do surgery on the baby and then close her back up. So they're very young, newlyweds, so just remember them. Remember them. Was there another one over here? John, still remember Sandy. I don't think she's feeling the best, but still remember her as you pray. Pray for Richard. We'd love to see him back church too. We, he came a Sunday and let's pray. We'd love to have him back. We really would. This house is open to whoever wants to come because that's God's house and that's the way God Amen. would have it. Amen. And I appreciate that. When I come, I felt that it was open and I appreciate how everybody's treated us and I've just learned to love everybody in here and everybody. <laughs> Amen. And so it, it, it's an open church, I agree. It's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. If you can't, if you can't come into God's house and feel welcome and loved, then that's not really God's house. Because mm -hmm. God's all about us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you have something? Yeah, in the situation with my mom, mom, they started her on a new chemo pill, and just she's just having a really tough time with it. It's just to reduce the chance of the cancer coming back, but I know she won't be able to take it, and I don't know that she's going to be able to take okay. it. Okay. And Allison's mother. So I remember Harold took her and his mom. Yeah. I can imagine that. You know, try to kill my youngest in, in a week. And I know. It's got to be hard on Keep praying for her. And just her. Absolutely. Still remember those that are grieving, those that are hurting, those that are troubled. I just want to thank the WMU for all they do. They came and uh, visited your mom and daddy. I think it was yesterday and brought them the food, and, and they really uplifted them. And I just want to personally say thank you for that and for the visit. And uh, they really did enjoy it. They were talking about it today. Yeah. And also, if you would, uh, we have several children at our school who um, live out there on Tower Dam Road in that supposedly campground. Yeah. And they've been evicted because mm. somebody bought the land. So we have a lot of people right now, a lot of kids, and they got nowhere to go. Mm. And it's really hard on them. So I just, you know, I just remember those things. They didn't have anything to begin with. And now that they have, you know, they have nothing, you know. Amber Dix? You know, most of them have no idea what's really going on right here around this community. And you can't have something like that. Uh, when I was driving the bus a few years ago, it was unbelievable. The, uh, the places I had to pick children up, the way when you could just say they would get on the bus and And, and to hear some of the tales, the family tales. And you can see where they live and how they live. Mm -hmm. The parents sometimes would come running out the door to hide in the bus and the cuss and grab the young. It's, it's sad. We, we, have, we don't see anything. The cases I see there at the hospital. Yeah. We, we don't see anything. Just not even tell the iceberg of what's going on. We're blessed. Yeah. I was thinking today on the way to the hospital this morning, of course it was Racetrack Alley, you know, at about 6 o'clock in the morning. But I got almost to the hospital down there at Winston, and then traffic just, <laughs> both lanes, stopped. And it was just touch and go, touch and go, touch and go. And it was like that for a good long while. I finally got up there, I could see some lights. Lord, you know, if you'll just listen to the Lord, He'll talk to you, Amen. and he'll teach you through life circumstances. And I'm like everybody else. Man, I need to get down there. I mean, I'm going to pray with her before they take her out for surgery, and I need to get through this, you know, but I'm not going anywhere. Well, finally, get down there, and I could see the flashing lights, and I thought, well, maybe it's a bump up, and they've moved the car over to the side, and because traffic was trying to move a little bit. I figured they are trying to pile us into one lane, and that's the problem. Well, as I got down there, they ended up detouring us, and I had to cut back up Renolda. And thank goodness for GPS in the car, because I was able to find an alternate way to the hospital that I would not have known. The GPS got me there. But anyway, as I was sitting there talking with the family and waiting during the surgery, it's like the Lord just spoke to me through that. What it was, it wasn't a car wreck. It was a house fire there on the side of the road. And somebody had gotten injured in that house fire. And the Lord spoke to me through that, going into what Johnny just said there. Think about it, folks. We go through our day-to-day -day activities, yeah. our livelihoods. I've got to be here. i got to go there. How can I switch lanes? i got to be. i got to be. And at the same time, I'm blessed to be able Amen. to be where I was compared to that person that got injured right. Right. there at house fire. And then I thought about, what about hell? Yeah. Here we are as Christians going down life's highway, cruising along. We got to go here. We got to do this. We got to be here. We got to be there. 
and our eyes are blinded to those that are dying lost and going to hell. It's a, it's a wake-up call. Amen. And we do it. We're all guilty of that. Amen. We're all guilty of that. We need a burden for lost people. Amen. We need a vision of hell in the churches. We need a vision of hell. Well, I, w I was going to preach this Sunday, but I'm going to preach it tonight here in a minute because I believe that's what God wants. So that's Amen. what we're going to do. <laughs> Anybody else? Full pray. That's good. Remember all this. Yes. And she was very, very sick and got COVID after all. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's like a spark. Starting in the school. Started at the school. Mm -hmm. And the kids have started talking about it. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a lot of football players in my class. So one of them brought it up. And so I asked, well, who was the seven? Uh -huh. And they started saying the names. And I said, well, were you one of them? And he said, no, ma'am, I'm already saved. And so I got to share my testimony. Amen. Back. I read an article today in the office in the uh, Good News Journal, and I read an article, and this is what he said, and I don't know where they get their facts and their figures, but the article sums it up with this. 80% of unchurched people would love to go to church with you if you'll ask them. If you'll ask them. Yeah. I'm afraid we as a church are failing on that, aren't we? Amen. We get caught up in that highway of life. And we forget some of the important things. You know, what, was, what happened a century ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago? Why were there being baptisms? Why were people getting saved about every service? Because people were busy inviting people to the house of God. Now you can't even hardly get Christians to go to the house of God. I'm going to preach here in a minute. Johnny, pray for us. Hey, great Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being here tonight, Father, for the fellowship that we've had already, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord, and what it means to our lives, Father. I pray, Lord, that we'll all get a, a bigger burden for the lost, Father. Really pray for them. Spend more than two or three million kids in our court. Mm -hmm. Really, really, just get a burden for them. Pray for them. Lord gave me this thought today, and I thought maybe I'd preach it Sunday, but I believe he said go ahead and preach it tonight. So y'all know me, I'm just going to preach for a little while tonight. Is that all right? Amen. Well, if it ain't, it'll have to be because I'm going to preach. Genesis chapter number 19 tonight. Genesis chapter number 19. Surely you know where that's at. It's the first book in the Bible. Genesis chapter number 19. The Lord was speaking to me today. Eighteen years ago, this day, do you know what happened? <coughs> 911, 9-11. And my thought is simply this, America has rejected God. Amen. It's just that simple. America has rejected God. Now, I know you folks are faithful. You're faithful on Sunday. You're faithful on Wednesdays. And I don't say I'm preaching to you or at you. I try not to do that anytime. I just try to preach. Let God do the dealing. 
But maybe there's some folks out there on the internet that needs to hear this tonight. I believe this came from the Lord. Genesis chapter 19, begin reading in verse number 12. I'm going to read three verses. This is when the angels had went down to Sodom and they had visited Lot. And this is what they said. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place. I want that to sink in. For we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place. For the Lord will destroy this city, but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. I would love to say tonight that the same thing. We need some folks that's going to be willing to get up and get out of the city. Amen. And what I mean of that is the city of sin that's going on here in this land of America, even tonight, 2019. Now, I know I've seen all the stuff on the computer and read, the, seen it on the newspaper and this, that, and the other. And while I'm thinking of it, don't forget Mike Estes as you pray. He's still having stomach problems. And remember Brother Chris as he's filling in for that church Amen. up there in Canaan. I failed to mention those. Don't forget those. Here we are 18 years later. Some of you may not be old enough to even remember that day. I remember that day. And I remember where I was that morning, and I remember how I felt. And you probably remember how you felt, the uncertainty of what's going on. And we know what happened to the stock market and the economy and everything else that followed. But there was one thing that did happen, I remember there for a few Sundays. The houses of God began to fill up with people. And their pride started to get dropped. And some things started to get in order with them and an almighty God. At least they acted like it. But it didn't take but just a few weeks, and they're back out in the world. When no more planes have hit no more buildings, when no more attacks have happened in a few weeks, everybody got comfortable and went back to their same old rigamen row of what was going on. That particular day, Sister Donna, I think it was about 2,800, roughly, lost their life, Americans, through the attacks on the Trade Centers, the Pentagon, and the flight that went down in the field there. About 2,800 Americans went down. And listen to me, because this is a serious thing. You listen to me out there, Internet. It's a serious thing. We have tried to take it, and this is the way the devil works. And please don't misunderstand me. I thank God for our firefighters. I thank God for our paramedics. I thank God for our policemen. I thank God for our emergency people. But we have tried to turn this day into a day of just recognizing them. I know some have lost their lives, and I know that's terrible, and I know that's pitiful, but we must remember the reason why it came on this soil to start with, yeah. and it is because of sin in the camp of America. Yeah. And if you think God said that was enough, you are wrong, because just like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, he sent the angels down there to Lot, and he told him, says, get all that's yours and get them out of this city because God has sent us to destroy it, and we are going to destroy it. Because that's what God had told them to do. We talked about angels here a few weeks ago as we studied on them. What do angels do? They carry out what God tells them to do. Now, I think today we need a report card of how America has done in the last 18 years. I jotted down some things in the study this afternoon. You think about how far down we've gone in the last 18 years. We've not gone closer to God. We've gone further away from God. And I'm sure I, I ain't got everything down, but I got a few things wrote down that I'll try not to wear out on, but when I wear out, I'll be done. The first one I put down was legalizing marijuana in many states. That wasn't there 18 years ago. But today it has been legalized in many states and other states that haven't legalized it want to legalize it, and they want to fall back and say it's for medicinal purposes. 
Well, it may be for medicinal purposes, but I got news for you. I know how humans are. They'll misuse it and use it to get high. And let me tell you what marijuana will do. Marijuana will tear family up. Marijuana will tear your finances up. Marijuana will cost you your job. Marijuana will cause you to want to commit suicide. Marijuana will cause you to want to marry, uh, murder somebody else. Y'all don't, y'all ain't amen in you? Maybe y'all gonna smoke it. <laughs> you better not let me see you smoke it. You do what you want to. But I tell you one thing, whether you hide it from me or not, there's an all-seeing God seeing it. Amen. And let me tell you something. If he wanted you to have it, he'd give it to you. Yeah. You say, well, it's a plan. Well, there's a whole lot of things that humans have misused through the years. Yeah. Hello. That ain't, we don't like that. Then they talk about, I seen something on the internet here not long ago that Walmart's going to quit selling ammunition for pistols. I know you're a gun man. You'll love this, and I'm a gun man too. They've quit selling ammunition for pistols because of all the people it kills. Well, guess what? Alcohol is responsible for a whole lot more deaths every year, and when are they going to quit selling that? Hello! We've gone further away from God in the last 18 years. Another thing that I have found is now Army chaplains and chaplains in the military are not allowed to pray in Jesus' name. If you cannot pray in Jesus' name, you're wasting your time of praying. And yet America thinks we don't need Jesus. I said to you, America, we need a good dose of Jesus all through this land. And we ain't getting it no more. Because the leaders of the land is trying to run God out and Jesus out. And I promise you this, he will not stay where he's not wanted. Amen. America, wake up! Amen. God gave us a wake-up call 18 years ago. Yeah. And if you think he was done then, you don't know the power of an almighty God. Right. I'm thankful for his mercy and his grace. He hadn't destroyed this land yet. But you get ready. Destruction's coming, America. Amen. I hope and pray I don't see it in my lifetime or my children or my grandchildren that I may have. But I'm telling you, it's a coming one day Amen. unless there is a turning back unto God I think about the day of judges back in the book of judges it was a dark time and they turned from God and God would set up a judge and deliver them when they cried out from their oppression what's he going to take America what's he going to take maybe this will get straight to Washington They'll turn it off, but I don't care. I'm glad we got a way of getting it out there. Now, Facebook will probably take this thing down after a while. Let them take it down. I don't care. Amen. It ain't going to change the fact. I'm still going to stand and preach it. Amen. You might take it down, but you'll have to come get me to take me out. Yeah. Things are wrong in this land. Something else I have found. In the last 18 years, they wanted to remove the Ten Commandments from the courthouses. How are you going to judge righteous judgment in the courts of the world, of this land, if you don't pay no attention to God's Ten Commandments? Hello, I'm just telling you like it is. These are things that have snuck in. Listen to me. It's jogging your mind. The devil didn't throw all these things in there at one time, folks. Just little by little, little by little. And when you accept a little, he gives you a little more. You accept a little, he gives you a little more. But God is keeping records of all these things. And he's holy and he's righteous and he will judge holy and he will judge righteously. We need the Ten Commandments back in this land. If we had it, if people would go for the Ten Commandments, you wouldn't need no more laws in America. There's so many laws on the books now, the lawyers can't even keep up with it. But I tell you what, if you've got enough money, they can find a way to get you out. But you can't do that with God. He can't be bought. Amen. Something else I find is gangs that you used to hear about in Los Angeles and Detroit, some of these places, now they're everywhere. Hello, there are gangs in Surrey County, Amen. North Carolina. Amen. You say that was never here, and it probably wasn't to the extent now, or, or it's worse now than it was 18 years ago. But honey, if America don't turn back to God, it's going to get worse. We don't like to hear that stuff. Well, it's a truth. Tell you something else. I remember some of these old preachers, even sinners sort of respected them. Because it was a preacher. 
Now they don't care. And Christians, I'm talking to you and me, Christians are now ridiculed, made fun of, oppressed. And too many Christians have turned back on God. And said, I don't want to be laughed at. I don't want to be made fun of. So I'll just ride with the world. I remind you, the Bible says in 1 John 2, 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We must not turn our back on God no matter what the opposition may be. No matter how much they make fun of us. No matter what they call hate speech. I saw where they took Franklin Graham. They shut him down on Facebook because they said he's hate speech. What's hate when you tell them that somebody loves them so much, Charlie, they died for them yeah. and want to save them from a place called hell? That ain't hate, honey. That's love. Amen. That's today. That wasn't here 18 years ago. Looks like we're doing a whole lot better in the last 18 years, ain't it? There's now liberal teaching in school. Used to when I was growing up. Teachers weren't necessarily ashamed to talk about God. Now when they hire, especially colleges, when they hire a professor, they want to make sure they're an atheist. They'll definitely teach evolution. And you've got to tell all of them there is no God. That's the land we're in today. My daughter, and I've told this before and I'm going to tell it again, when she was at the college she went to, and I'm not going to call it by name, but the college that she went to, she wrote a paper one time and she put something in there about God, and the professor got mad about it and gave her a bad mark on that paper. Not because the paper was bad, but because it had God mentioned in it. God bless you for mentioning God. Amen. There's eternal rewards in heaven for that paper, I tell you that. Amen. But that's what's going on today. I'm talking elementary. I'm talking middle school. I'm talking high school. Don't you say God. Don't you mention God. If they mention God to you and open the door, then you can. Amen. What's happened? There's no fear of God. That's what's happened. They don't think God's responsible for that 18 years ago. There's liberalism all around us. Amen. All around us, and I'm not talking about your politics, I'm just saying they're liberal in their beliefs and in their ideas and what they're teaching and what they're accepting. And hey, let me preach here a minute. Some of us as parents and grandparents are being liberal in our ways of accepting things going on in our family. We've got kids and grandkids and nieces and nephews that's living like the devil and we're saying it's okay, it's their life. They're gonna have to find out on their own. They're gonna have to make their decision. What happened to the fact that when it used to be, when a mom and daddy would come up and say, son, I just want to tell you, you're living wrong. And that is wrong. And you need to get back in the Bible. And you need to follow God. And he'll fix your house for you. We don't do that no more. We say, let them live however. They'll have to learn it on their own. Well, I tell you, it's hard to learn it over yonder in a ditch when they're drunk. It's hard to learn it over yonder in a ditch when they're shot up with drugs. It's hard to learn it in the penitentiary. But I tell you this, we need to be out there telling them about Jesus. And stand firm on our convictions. We've gone liberal. Yeah. I like it when there's a hush through the church like that because that means I ain't a preaching liberal. That was amens from heaven when there's silence. Let me tell you something else. There are now mass shootings in schools and everywhere. That wasn't really around in 18 years ago. Hello? You think God's given enough signals to a world, to a nation that has forgotten God? He says a nation that forgets God, Jeff, I'll cast them into hell. Amen. Which means I'll turn my back on them. I believe we're there, Ashley. Yeah. But it was our fault. Yeah. We forgot God. And since he is holy and righteous, he's going to carry it out. I'll cast you into hell. We don't like it kind of preaching, but it's the truth out there, Internet. Something else that's took over in the last 18 years. 
these gays and lesbians. In 2012, North Carolina, I'm talking 2012. That's a whole lot of time from 2000 and, 2001, wasn't it? Yeah. That was 11 years later, the state of North Carolina put out that gay marriage thing. Yeah. Well, I got news for you, I won't marry you. Amen. You say, well, I'll sue you. Go ahead, I ain't got nothing. It's gonna be hard to get much if I ain't got nothing. <laughs> you say, well, you might have something. I'll make sure I ain't got nothing. <laughs> if I have to give it all away. Hello, truth of it, it's the truth of it. I will not bend, I will not bow, I will not change. And here's something else. We've got some churches that are putting gays and lesbians in pulpits and calling them pastors. And then you wonder what's wrong in this land. I'll tell you, God has not changed his mind about sin, Caleb. He says it's an abomination in his eyes. And when you try to put somebody in the sacred place behind the sacred desk and you mock God, Get ready, trouble's on the way. Amen. Trouble's on the way. Something else I have found out. Abortion is now the number one killer in America. Let that sink in. It ain't your guns. It ain't your bullets. Brother Warren, abortion is the number one killer in America today. Now let me get back here where y'all can hear me in the back. Y'all can't hear me up there, I know. <laughs> she just don't want me to get loud back here. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. I told you what happened 18 years ago. About 3,000 American lives were lost on 9-11. 2001. And today we're sad and we're grieving. Don't think I mean. I hate it for them and their families. It was a terrible thing. But we'll get all upset and mourn and cry today, Charles. And yet today, 9-11, 2019, 3,000 babies were murdered in America. Tomorrow, 3,000 babies will be murdered. The next day, 3,000 babies will be murdered. The next day, Renee, 3,000 babies will be murdered. And so on and so on. That's what our average is right now in America. Now, you multiply 3,000 times 365 times 18, and you tell me what we are. I'll tell you what we are, America. We're a bunch of murderers. Amen. And we all are. Yeah. You say, we ain't neither, preacher. Yeah, you are. If you vote them in and they vote for it, you just as guilty, the blood's on your hands. We don't like it. One of these days, y'all get you a preacher in here, just let you have what you want. But till then, I'm going to give you what God says. The churches are now empty that were full. I hear it all the time. I hear of pastors. They'll say, Wednesday night, we had five. Sunday night we had five or six, ten. Sunday had about 50, 60. Where are they? Where are they? I tell you where it's at. Second Chronicles 7 14. Yeah, there it is. It says that if my people, who's my people? I know he's speaking unto Israel back in that text, but I guess what? I'm still his people too. Amen. That if my people, which are called by my name, I'm called by his name. When he saved me, I had royal blood put right in these veins. That if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways, then, and not until then, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. And he says this, I'll heal their land. Amen. Until God's people get serious about it, don't expect America to get fixed. The revival that's going to need to come into this land ain't going to come through the White House. Uh, it ain't going to come through Washington. It ain't going to come out of Hollywood. Let me tell you where it's going to have to start. It's going to have to start in our house. And then get into God's house. And then get out into other houses. Until then, we got nothing. Nothing.
How about that? 3,000 Americans died on 9-11 and 3,000 abortions every day. Isn't that sad? But yet we're one nation under God. Aren't we? If they could change it, they would. Yeah. If they could take it, God, we trust off your money, they would. Yeah. And here's the sad thing. If they did it, Jeff, I ain't a Christian, they'd probably stand up and say nothing bad. Yeah. So, friends, I look back over the last 18 years on this report card, and I say America's got a great big F. Yeah. And F, when I was going to school, is failing. You don't pass, you don't go to the next grade, you start over. I feel like it's where we're at today. Amen. Turn with me real quickly. Isaiah chapter 1. And I'll be quiet, I'm going to hush. See, y'all better be glad I preach on Wednesdays. If I preach on Wednesdays, you get out of here quicker. I wear down quicker. Isaiah chapter 1, if I ever get there. Holy Spirit's all over me right now. I'm just shaking. Amen. Mm. Don't know where my glasses is. Pocket. Pocket. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 1, verse number 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. Yeah. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Amen. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. Children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. Notice who forsook who. The people forsook the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. Friends, just some of these things I've read out to you tonight that I jotted down, and there's a whole lot more. And I'm sure you've thought of some things. But these things have provoked God unto anger. Amen. It says in the end of verse 4, they are gone away backward. The churches that used to be filled 18 years ago after that tragedy, they're no longer filled today. They're gone backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? Listen. Whew. That gives me cold chills thinking of this verse. Why should you be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. Amen. From the sole of the foot even unto the head there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. That's us preachers' fault. Yeah. We're the ones that need to be trying to close in these wounds Amen. and putting the ointment in, brother. Right. We failed. Yeah. When we don't preach God's word <coughs> and try to get people to repent of their wickedness, yeah. We're not applying the right bandage to the soul. Verse 7, your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. What about all these illegal immigrants? What about the Muslims and the Islamics that are taking over? You say, are they preacher? Was there one in Congress 18 years ago? I thought we declared war on that bunch. Yeah. We forgot. Amen. We forgot. We just accept. Because we've been indoctrinated, but with this lovey daddy. Yeah. Lovey daddy. Verse 8, and the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, 
we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. I say unto you tonight, I believe wholeheartedly that if it wasn't for the remnant of true born again believers Amen. in this land that try to follow God, that try to be faithful to his house, that try to worship him, that try to pray, and try to follow his word, our nation would already be gone. Amen. Amen. So you say, is there work for us to do? Absolutely. You better remain faithful and keep doing the things you're supposed to do right. because if the remnant may get smaller. Yeah. But you know what? I still want to be in the remnant, Donna. If it's only one, I want to be in it. How about you? Lori, play a song. We're going to give an invitation. I don't know. I believe we ought to. Maybe you're out there today. This message has struck you, not because I preached it, but because God sent it. <coughs> Bow your head, get things right with God. Yeah. Don't just confess your sin, but repent of it. Turn from these things. Get it right. Get your house in order. Get yourself in order. Might start seeing sinners getting saved again. Right. When we get back to the old way, yeah. and we do what thus saith the word about it, business will pick up in God's house. But when churches don't want to do what thus saith the word of God, he'll let you play around. Be serious about it. Let's stand. Altar's open if you need it. thinking as she was playing that we're going to go I mentioned this to Brother Tim Flippin Sunday morning during Sunday school I was out there talking to him a minute we had these doors open because we were going to have the baptism Sunday remember I didn't even think about this when they were doing this remodeling <laughs> but when you open those doors that cross and that cross on the wall is almost level lined up. I thought about the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Jesus died for all. Amen. He's, I know we try to put him, you know, the big cross in the middle and then the others over here, but I don't know if that's exactly scriptural. I know he was crucified between two thieves, but I don't know if he was higher. But I do know this. One day you're going to see him exalted high and lifted up. Right, amen. But I thought about it, and I said, you know, there ain't two crosses right there. There was three at Golgotha. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, the Bible says, take up your cross and follow me. The reason the third one ain't there is because it's for us. We've got to take it up and follow him out into this world. The old song we sing in the old hymn book, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? Nope. There's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. God bless you tonight. Thank you. You may hear this again Sunday. If God says preach it again Sunday, I weep. Amen. I promise you I weep. Amen. It's been good to be here.
There was a choice. There was a choice. God's always a God of choices. And you know what? As God gave us this message tonight, whoever's hearing it out there, here, wherever, I wish I could preach it from the Capitol steps. Yeah. But they won't let me. Amen. But I tell you this, there is a choice everybody has to make. God's not going to force America to be good. God wants America to obediently follow him. And if we don't, there's a price to pay. Luke, dismiss us in prayer, please. Thank you, Father, for this day, Lord, and just thank you for a portion of help and strength. And God, we just pray tonight for the ones that are sick in our church, Lord, the ones that's got things wrong with them, Father, and I just pray, God, that you know who they are, Father, and you know how to fix it, Lord. I just pray, God, that you would just minister to each and every one that's been mentioned in their hearing tonight, Lord. I just pray for this little church here on the side of the road, Lord. I pray for our pastor, Father. I, God, I just pray that he never breaks from what he preaches. Lord, I just ask you, Lord, just lead God and direct our lives. Lead God and direct this church. I ask you, Father, just to help us to ever serve you and ever do your will. Forgive us, God, what we sin and what we fail. Jesus, may my pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. I love you. See you Sunday, Lord, really.